All right, hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name's Gabby. My name's Mike. And today we're shooting part two of our Ionic 6 Ultimate Review. This one's a 2024 model and it's showcased in digital green matte. Doesn't look green at all. That's why I'm wearing a green top to make up for it. Now in the sunlight, you do get a little bit more of a green you hue, um, but our video quality just isn't that good and it's a rainy day today, so. This still, is what we're working with. Still an awesome color though. <laughs> a beautiful, beautiful color. So if you're unfamiliar with our channel, we do live walkthroughs every weekday at 2 p.m. of brand new Kia or Hyundai products. Sometimes we'll even compare it to past product. We'll explain features, technology, all of the above. But today's emphasis is on talking tech. Mm -hmm. Earlier in this week, we did a full walkthrough of the comfort features, just everything you get in the Ionic 6 Ultimate, but there's so much about this vehicle that we just can't fit it all into a video without it being probably two hours long. So today we're here to answer all your tech questions, give you a breakdown of what things do and how you use them, and also how to turn them off if you're not a fan of all these tech features. I'll let Mike lead with our intro and disclaimer, this is gonna be a very long intro. We do this every video. If you are watching in the future and you're not watching live with us, you can totally skip to the three or four minute mark. That's when we'll start talking about the car. So exactly. Mike, take it away. All right, so why do we do this videos? Reason number one, if you own a Kia or a Hyundai and you wanna learn more about your vehicle, Exterior, comfort, safety, convenience, technology. This is a channel to be at. We shoot any and everything that comes in. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people have found it extremely useful. Yes. Reason number two, do you want me to just do two and three? Yeah. Okay, reason it. number two, if you are in the market for a vehicle and you want to learn a little bit more about Kia and Hyundai uh, vehicles, this is obviously the channel to be at for all the reasons I said in part one, right? So um, definitely a great place to learn more about a vehicle, get you confident about your buying decision. Um, and uh, assist yeah. you along the way. Assist you along the way. Reason. And speaking of, yeah. <laughs> yes. Speaking of, now that you decided you want to buy a Kia or a Hyundai and you live in Ontario, why not buy from us? This is reason three. Uh, we have three locations, right? We're here at Brantford Kia, the main hub studio, uh, down the street where I work, Brantford Hyundai, and up north we have Onsen Hyundai. Mm -hmm. We all would love to help you finish your um, buying journey. Uh, you know, by just uh, helping you out with all this great information about any and every vehicle you're interested in. All right, thank you, Mike. Now I'm gonna show you guys how you can join our next live video. That way, if you are planning on catching us live in the future, you're able to ask us questions in real time. We're able to see it and kind of almost chat with you without the chatting, chatting. <laughs> all right, so what you wanna do is go to the Kia Hyundai channel on YouTube. She'll look a little something like this. Definitely hit subscribe if you haven't already for new updates on everything Kia and Hyundai related. You can also hit the bell for notifications every time we post, which again is every day at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you go to the homepage or even the live tab right over here, it'll allow you to select today's video. So you can see it's scheduled for today at 2 p.m. and it says upcoming. That's just because my computer is very slow. Now when I give this a press, it's gonna load the video. And after we watch this ad, which is about an RV show, <laughs> We'll be loaded into the video, but you can see on the right, that's where you guys can see all the questions coming in. That's where you can leave questions. And sometimes when we have our moderator, they'll also answer questions as we're going through the video. We don't have that privilege today, so keep it classy, people. In the mm -hmm. meantime, let's talk about the car. I'm gonna start off with some of the basic specs about the vehicle, and then I swear I'll get into just technology. So number one, under the, I don't wanna say under the hood, but powering this vehicle is a 239 kilowatt electric motor or a 77.4 kilowatt hour lithium ion polymer battery. You have all wheel drive in the long range, all wheel drive, you guessed it, mm -hmm. and 435 kilometers of all electric range. The Ionic 6 is unlike any Hyundai electric vehicle we've seen before. It it's very distinct looking. It's got amazing styling, both in the interior and the exterior. On top of that, it's got unbeatable performance and the technology, outstanding. So I just realized I didn't grab the key. I'll have Mike kind of show the exterior while I do that. And then I'm gonna show you my first notable feature that's included in the ultimate package. And that is remote smart park assist. So from your key fob, you're able to remote start your vehicle and I'll show you how to do that. Oh, Mike. <laughs> oh yeah, whoops, I'm whoops. in the corner here. <laughs> so this is your key fob, very unique looking key fob and the first style of this for Hyundai, I like it. What you wanna do is hit the lock button and then press the remote start button. And of course, since this is an electric vehicle, you're not actually gonna hear a startup noise. Your vehicle will um, illuminate its hazard lights and amber lights to let you know it's on. And then from the side of the remote, you can see we have these two icons that are not included in the other Ionic 6 trims. That is to either move your vehicle forwards or backwards. To move your vehicle either forwards or backwards. So let's do forwards. 
I'm gonna press and hold this, my car is gonna turn on, and then it's gonna slowly creep towards me. Spooky, eh? Now, I'm not gonna let go of this button, but you can see the car braked. That's because it sensed me, and it decided I am not worth hitting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's also gonna do that for walls, garbage cans, whatever you may have. Uh, a lot of our customers wonder, when am I ever gonna use this feature? And let me tell you, it is phenomenal in tight situations. So mm -hmm. if you're parking at the mall during Christmas season or the grocery store when everybody's there, this will allow your vehicle to come out of its parking space so you don't have to worry about dinging your doors or other people's doors, which yep. is very, very I, nice. I use it all the time. Perfect. Oh, especially at our dealerships when we're Cramming exactly. cars together is or if I have uh, like my kids in the back and I need to park the car, I'll say get out of the car, guys, so yeah. that they're not trying to open the doors and, and, and ding other cars and such too as well. So um, you don't think you'll ever use it? Trust me, I drive car some. I drive like different Hyundai's home, and when I get one without it, I notice it. Yes. Like I go, oh no. <laughs> Once you try it the first time, you're like, you know what? I can see some use for this. Yeah. All right, looking at the front, you can see we have a full LED headlight system. And take a look at those parametric pixel lights. So as you take a closer look, you'll see everything is pixelated. Even your main headlight unit, it's a big square. And you'll mm -hmm. find that's a common theme throughout the exterior and the interior of this vehicle. Looks really nice. It does, of course, add value. The LED lights are extremely bright. You also have automatic high beam assist, which means your vehicle will shut off its high beams when it senses another vehicle in the distance. Mm -hmm. Now, while we're still on the topic of the front grille, we do have active air shutters. So that's what this is here. This is gonna allow air to flow through your vehicle, aiding in battery cooling. Sorry, I'm out of breath for a second. And then also airflow throughout your vehicle. So just increased efficiency. This vehicle has a big emphasis on aerodynamics. That's why it's got this stunning silhouette. It's not just for looks, it's for efficiency. Mm -hmm. All right, I mentioned the headlights. Now, if we take a closer look here, it's gonna be hard to see because of our outstanding video quality. Oh, I got it, here we go. <laughs> we have ultrasonic sensors built into that belt line in the vehicle. So that is not just for looks, of course, because it doesn't look that great, but <laughs> it will beep inside the cabin to let you know when you get close to something. So that's also gonna be used for your remote smart park assist and just parking in general. It's nice to have that peace of mind, especially with EVs, chances are you may be parking it in some sort of parking compound or your garage where things may not be the most spacious. On top of that, in the very center, we also have a camera. So once your sensors are triggered, either by a car or a wall or a person, it's gonna automatically pop up your camera in your driver's area, so on the main screen to show you just how much space you have from other obstacles. Mm -hmm. All right. Wait, I'm gonna tackle this because of, before we go down the rabbit hole. So with par Smart Park Assist, it does go forwards and backwards on the yes. key. You don't need to reverse the car into the spot. You could actually have it go forward into the spot. So yes. it is clearly labeled because it's two different buttons, guys. Yes. Um, another thing you can do with this vehicle is have it park itself. So you can either do it from the remote, which is only going to go forwards and backwards. But if you press our parking camera, uh, park camera button in the very center, it's going to allow you to, well, it's going to make the vehicle see the spots around you. So of course, only if it's a lined parking spot. And it'll either reverse park or parallel park your car for you. You can be in the vehicle or outside. You can use the controls if you're outside. And then of course, stay inside. It'll do it. It's just super cool, the parallel and everything. It's something yeah. I wish we could do during our lives, but we do not have parking guidelines in this video bay. So I know. won't mm. be something we can present here. We have done a video on it already, though, um, a past video. Now for our mirrors, if you look underneath, you'll see we have another camera. So that is going to show you what is happening in your blind spot when you indicate a turn, whether to be to change lanes or to make a full on left or right turn. So this is of course very useful because it shows you everything that's happening in your blind spot. But let me tell you a piece of real, real world advice that I've experienced. I live on a busy street and I have to parallel park. If I'm ever driving a vehicle that has this feature, I can see exactly where my wheel is and how close I am to the curb. So I know my parking's perfect, or maybe not so perfect, and I can make sure that nothing's getting scraped on my wheels. I really like, because mm -hmm. these are really, really nice wheels. Um, also, if Mike, if you wanna come over to this side, yeah. on the mirror portion of your mirror, we do have an indicator that is going to illuminate when you do have a vehicle in your blind spot. So of course, if you don't look at your camera, you'll still see the flashing light on your mirror there, and you'll get an indicator, an audible indicator, inside the cabin to let you know there is something in your blind spot. All right, door handles. These pop out automatically when your vehicle is unlocked and go flush with the vehicle when it's locked. 
And when you're walking towards it too? Yes, it out, so it automatically cool. unlocks for you and it will lock for you. On top of that, this vehicle is equipped with digital key to touch, which allows you to open and even start your vehicle using your phone. So if you're sharing your car with somebody for the weekend, you don't want to give them your keys, or maybe you lost a set of your keys, you can use your phone to start and open your car and lock it, of course. Do you have the key with you? I just noticed this too. If your car, I just noticed that, so on the key, where the spare is, so yeah. where the actual physical key is, that, yep. that little knob. Yep. Yeah, you can still unlock your car if your fob ever dies. Exactly, and then so that little knob actually has a key under it, and you can put it right in here and open your car up. Yes. <laughs> all right, so before we hop inside, we're going to continue on with the exterior of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to close that all the way so it doesn't beep. There we go. All right, come on this way. <laughs> So along the rear, again, we have these beautiful LED pixelated taillights. It also adjusts, not adjusts, oh my gosh, translates to your spoiler up here. So I don't think we've ever had, no, we definitely never had a Hyundai EV with a spoiler. It looks phenomenal on this car. Mm -hmm. It very much gives that retro but futuristic look to it. And then of course, in motion, these lights are very bright. People are gonna know when you are braking, safety, you know, that kind of stuff down here. We have our rear view camera, and then also another pixelated button for your smart power lift gate. So you can either open this by pressing that button like I just did, or you can use your remote key fob, or you can even press the button by the driver's area up in the front. For trunk space, we've already shown it in a previous video, but we'll take a quick glance at it right now. Safety-wise, you do not get a spare in this vehicle. Keep in mind the battery is taking up a large space of underneath the vehicle. Uh, but we do get a mobility kit, so that's a quick fix. And of course, lightweight. Weight savings definitely matters with EVs. And it looks, it's bigger than it looks on camera. Oh, for if the trunk? You, you guys watched the one on Tuesday. I went in that trunk. Yeah. So. <laughs> a human fits in that trunk. <laughs> I don't know if that is relevant to yeah. most people's lives. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back here along the rear bumper, we again have our ultrasonic parking sensors. So perfect if you are reverse parking. Your camera will of course show a live feed once you throw the vehicle into reverse or as soon as those sensors are triggered. I didn't mention when we were in the front, but I'll mention in the back. We have our sensors translated to the side of the vehicle and that plays a key function in something called Highway Drive Assist 2. 2, <laughs> not 4. <laughs> we're not there yet. So essentially Highway Drive Assist, which is available on the lower end, Ionic 6 models and tons of Kia and Hyundai vehicles, is a smart cruise control that's navigation based, will keep you centered in your lane and will keep you from a safe distance from the car ahead of you. It'll even take you to a complete stop if you hit stop and go traffic. Level two takes it up a notch in the sense that it'll actually change lanes for you. So as soon as you indicate a left or right lane change and keep your hands on the wheel, your vehicle will change its lanes. It's a semi-autonomous drive mode and it is phenomenal, extremely smooth. Very, very user-friendly. You can't mess it up. We've done a bunch of videos actually driving it. I totally wish we could drive it on today's live, but I mean, our internet connection is already bad as is. I don't think we could even leave this room. No. So It'll be 1G. Yeah, check out <laughs> our past driving videos if you want to see that. All right, I think we'll make our way inside. You want me to go to that no, side No, come to this nope, side. No, this side first? Okay. Yeah. So it wouldn't be a tech review without talking about things like our audio and the ultimate does not make any sacrifices. You get a Bose premium sound system, which you can see on your door right over there. Phenomenal, phenomenal sound system. Definitely my favorite brand that Hyundai uses in their vehicles. You can customize it, tailor it, tune it, whatever you like best. If you're a big music fan or a podcast fan, you're going to have crystal clear audio, which is beautiful. Um, you may also notice the lack of buttons on the door. The only buttons you're going to see are your memory seats. So you get two memory seat options, but if you use your user profiles located in the main screen of this vehicle, you can actually turn that into four <laughs> numbers. <laughs> All right. Four settings. <laughs> four settings. Four. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna quickly take a seat inside. Again, I won't talk too much about comfort and tech, or comfort and focus on tech, but we got a lot of comfort features in here. So your seats are power adjustable with lumbar support. They're also heated and ventilated, but I'm gonna stop there and get back to technology. Right over here, we have an electronic parking brake, which bad news for all our handbrake turn fans, you can't do it in this vehicle. It's either on or it's off. <laughs> You also have a button to open your charge door port, a button for your lift gate, like I mentioned earlier, and all of your mirror and window, sorry, your mirror controls are right over here. You also have power folding mirrors. If you ever wanna shut that feature off, you get this button to press, or you can power fold them as needed. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> Is that
in the room with us right now, yes. These screens are massive, but they are so user-friendly. If you're not a techie person, you don't have to be. Hyundai makes it very, very easy. I'm gonna take that camera from Mike just so I can show you guys up close. Right now, it's on the light setting, so everything kind of has a white display. There we go. You can also have it in dark mode, which I know a lot of my customers prefer, and it gives it, you guessed it, a dark look to it, which I really like. It's a little bit easier on the eyes. <laughs> um, right over here, you can see this is our 12.3 inch navigation and main screen. And then on the left side, we have another 12.3 inch display with an emphasis on just being your gauge cluster. So no tachometer on this vehicle, of course, but you do have a digital speedometer and your consumption meter. So that's gonna show you just how efficiently you're driving or unefficiently, if that's your kind of thing. You also have an indicator of what level of regenerative braking you are on. So right behind the steering wheel, you'll see we have our paddle shifters and a lot of people Ask the question, why does that EV have a paddle shifter? It's just for regen braking. Kia and Hyundai offer this great system called iPedal braking, which is essentially one pedal driving, allowing you to only utilize the accelerator. The vehicle will brake for itself and take you up to a complete stop. I saw Mark just ask heads up display. And you can see, sorry, I'm gonna try to zoom in. We have a full 10 inch heads up display. I know it doesn't look like 10 inches here, but trust me, it is. We have our digital speedometer or digital speed reading right in the center with um, our maximum speed limit on the right side. There is no speed limit in the Brantford Kia showroom, though, no. that's for sure. <laughs> now, if you look at that line right above zero kilometers per hour, that is going to be your safe distance meter. There's probably a technical term for it, but that's what I'm going to call it. Essentially, your vehicle is not going to let the car ahead of you pass that line, which is Great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as I was, if I was actually driving on the road ahead of me, it'll show an indicator of a car and how far it is or how close it is to that line. And again, it won't let me pass it. All right. And so someone also said, is it augmented reality? It is. So the only time the augmented reality really looks like an augmented reality is when you have a navigation on. So if I have a distance or not distance, a route set in my nav, it's going to it looks almost like a video game. It's so hard to talk about and not show, but it's gonna show me um, big, big arrows and multiple colors showing me when to turn, how far I need to go to turn, and even what vehicles are around me. So it's gonna give me an indicator if there's somebody in a blind spot, what side it's on, and even if I change any stations on the radio. So, very interesting. Sorry, Mike, I gave you the camera, but I need it back. Yeah. <laughs> For our steering wheel, everything's reversed. So if you currently own a Hyundai and it's not a newer EV, chances are you're used to seeing this on this side and vice versa. It's flipped, it messes up my mind, but let's try to talk about it. Right up here, this button is gonna allow you to turn on your highway drive assist or your smart cruise control, depending on if you're on the highway or if you're on the city. Just below that, you have your speed meter. <laughs> so this is gonna allow you to increase, decrease, or pause your speed or of course your cruise control. And then at the very bottom, we have our following distance. So like I mentioned, this car is gonna keep you at a safe distance and not go any closer than is safe from the vehicle ahead of you. You get four different presets to choose from, from closest to furthest. On the right side, we have our steering assistance. So if I give this a push on my dash, you'll see we now have that icon, which means the system's active. It uses a camera located right over here to monitor the lanes ahead of me and is going to be a semi-autonomous steering assistant. So I do have to keep my hands on the wheel, but it takes a lot of the strain of driving off. <laughs> Not that driving is a strain, but you know what I mean. Drive mode. So this vehicle comes equipped with three different drive modes, eco, normal, and sport standard. Now you can also set a custom drive mode. And if you see that icon, it says hold for snow. Let's give it a hold. We are now in snow mode, which is going to torque <laughs> your all wheel drive system to prevent I'm going to say the word slippage in snowy conditions. This vehicle can also tell the difference between packed and soft snow. So it's going to tailor the drive towards those conditions, which is very nice. All right, I'll now have Mike join me on the passenger side. And I'm going to take a breath. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the inside of Power the Ionic 6. And lumbar support on this side too. Oh, no sacrifices. Um, if you guys are unfamiliar with our last video on this vehicle, I did touch on some of the materials that are built into this vehicle and how Hyundai put an emphasis on making this vehicle as sustainable as possible. Of course, zero tailpipe emissions with an EV, but the production of an EV does require some 
emissions. It's not the cleanest process. So the fact that Hyundai used recycled materials as much as they could really makes a difference. This leather material is recycled and it's not animal, <laughs> which is nice. It is a vegan leather. Um, however, it's still very, very soft, very supple, and of course heated and ventilated, which is quite nice. Back to tech though. All right, so I'm on my main screen here. When you turn on the vehicle, you'll have a look at this screen. Let's slide over, hit setup over here, and then vehicle. This is where you're gonna go to tailor and tune your safety settings, all your advanced driver assistance systems. If you're not a fan of something, turn it off or you can alter it. So let's hit driving convenience. This is gonna take me to my pretty much general summary. So I can go to Smart Cruise Control and tailor it to exactly how I like the vehicle to operate. If it's based on driving style, every time I'm in sport mode, it's gonna kind of pick up or accelerate faster than if I was in eco mode or normal mode. If you want it to just be the same, you can unclick that and then make your preferred settings whatever your preferred settings is. You can also go to default and use Hyundai's, of course, default settings. If you're not a fan of something like your highway driving assist, unclick that, the system's off. It's as easy as that. Now, if you do want it on, you can also turn off these secondary features. So if you don't want your vehicle to automatically change speeds on the highway, whether it goes from 100 to 110 or to 90, turn that off. Same with lane change, you can turn it off. It's again, super easy to turn back on. You can't mess this up if you ever change your mind in the future or if another driver in your vehicle wants to use those features, you can always go back and unclick it, which is really nice. Speed limit, again, this vehicle can adjust the speed limit for you or it can give you a warning if you are going over. Essentially, it's just gonna put your speed limit in red if you are over the limit. Warning methods, you can change the volume if you find it a bit too loud or a bit too quiet driver safety. So this vehicle is going to let you know when the car ahead of you is left. So whether it be at a complete stop or even a crawling speed, if the car in front of you has gone, your car is going to chime to let you know it's time to go. And then of course, again, if you have your smart cruise control on, your vehicle is automatically going to do that for you. Forward safety. This vehicle is equipped with forward collision warning and avoidance. So you can either have it warn you if there's a risk of a collision, which is very nice to have, or it can actively assist for you, meaning it'll warn you first, if you don't react, the car will. So it'll legitimately emergency brake for you to avoid said collision. This works for pedestrians, for cyclists, even in junctions. So if you're making a left turn as a, at a busy intersection, your car is gonna be paying attention, and hopefully you are too, it can avoid collision. All right, we're almost done. <laughs> parking safety. So this vehicle is going to monitor what's going on as you're parking. If you're slowly reversing out of a spot and there's two huge vehicles beside you, it doesn't matter how long of a neck you have or how good of a shoulder check you do, sometimes you just can't see what's happening back there. The vehicle has sensors and cameras that can though. So it will warn you if there's someone or something coming from either the left or right side and it will emergency break for you if you fail to react. I love this feature and again we've tested and tried everything here and we've done a video on everything here so if you want to know more about let's say the highway drive assist 2 or the reverse safety definitely the reverse safety video we did was hilarious we, i tried to hit my manager with the car we tried so hard the car wouldn't let us it's it's good to have <laughs> all right <laughs> now let's go to drive mode and like i mentioned there is a custom drive mode here there's also customs for your braking it's really cool <laughs> very intuitive so let's go here Custom drive mode, you can either have it on snow or your personal drive mode. We'll press the gear icon, and here you can customize every little thing. So the drive line, is it gonna be primarily rear wheel drive? Is it gonna be autom automatic all wheel? You can see here, there's a ton of different options. I'm not gonna play around with it because it's not my car, but you know, for me, power output would be maximized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me know what your custom drive mode would look like in the comments. <laughs> all right. Um, Mike, what's your favorite tech feature on this vehicle? So we can talk about it. Because I'm uh, all over the place right now. My favorite tech feature? Mm -hmm. oh, I, I saw like putting it in sport mode. <laughs> Ambient lighting? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you know what? My favorite feature, period, is like how fast this car picks up like in but, sport mode. That's not techy, but... <laughs> well, it's a, it's a mode, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's just in general. It's, it's the whole thing. When you're driving this... It's just how safe you feel in it, how much it does for you, how much it warns you. You'll be so surprised. Like, I don't ever see myself hitting a car in this thing. I don't yeah. even, you know, it, it will well, stop you. I hope not. <laughs> yeah, it will stop you. I mean, you would have to really try, right? Like, like yeah. you would have to override it breaking for you. But uh, yeah, 
to get back to your point, and you just did it. <laughs> yeah, I love the ambient lighting. The ambient lighting is stunning. So the Ionic 6 is our first Hyundai vehicle to incorporate dual ambient lighting. Meaning right now I have it set to lightning violet. Yeah, but check this out. <laughs> yeah, check, check this, this out. <laughs> we can switch it to something like healing forest perhaps. That's super cool. So you've got green down there and you've got that. And you know what else I like? There's no lights right here in the door. This is just basically the way they made the design in the grooves. It will shine from the one light down here and it kind of it makes it look like it fades up here. So I do like that. But you know what's even better? You don't have to use the Hyundai presets. Mm -hmm. You can use these color wheels here and choose exactly what you like. So if you're a big fan of blue and red, take a look at our doors. So here, here's a funny thing with the blue and red. I'll tell you something cheesy. I brought some popsicles for my kids. You know those rocket ones that are blue, red, and white? Yeah. And I'd put it to blue and red and gave them the popsicles, and they were just like, this is so cool. So, hey, you know? It's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> little things. On top of that, if you want to make a change quickly, link it to voice recognition, and it'll, it'll move with you. So as you're talking, yeah. the lights will move with you. What do you mean? Let's see. Like, so if I talk... Yes, you can talk. <laughs> oh, I see, like a volume Sorry. bar. I didn't, oh. I didn't. <laughs> like yeah, a volume bar. Cool? Okay, that's cool. I didn't know that part. <laughs> it's not a huge feature, but again, little quirks like that. I'm just always impressed by the tech. And if you do personally own this vehicle, I'm sure within probably even months of owning it, if you've even... Is it possible to have had the Ionic 6 for months here in Canada? Yeah, it's if you got a 23. If you yeah, got a brand yeah, new yeah, one. Yeah. Um, so... It's just, I, I know you're constantly learning new things. It's, it's bizarre. Okay, so we talked a lot about the screen. If any of you guys that are on right now have any questions, please let me know so I can answer them before this video ends. If not, I'm gonna move forward with uh -huh. our tech that's down here. So we got manual buttons, which may not sound techy, but oh my goodness, let me tell you, it is so nice to have a physical button sometimes. You know how hard it is to be driving and wanna do a basic command, oh, yeah. but you have to cycle between multiple different screens. Tesla, I'm looking at you. Yes. It's nice to have this. Now, again, there are some tech features incorporated into here. So my parking camera button, like I mentioned earlier, if I give this a push, it's gonna show up our park assist system or warning. You can put don't show again or close. Essentially, that's the button you're gonna hold down if you do want your vehicle to search for parking spots. So if I'm slowly creeping through a parking lot, hold that button. It's gonna let me know when it senses a parking spot, it can manually park, automatically park itself, not manually, and then it'll do it. It'll do the rest for you, which is very nice. If not, I can just look at my camera whenever I want, which is, again, very nice. If you're having lunch in your car, waiting for it to charge, you can see everything that's happening around you while you're nice and comfy with your heated or ventilated seats. To the right of that, we have our parking sensors. So if you want to shut them off, you're just going to push this button. This is great if you find the parking sensors annoying or if you put something like a, a hitch on the back and you don't want it to beep every time you throw it into reverse because you know your trailer is there. So, very nice to have. Down here, there's a wireless phone charger with, again, a pixelated design. This is your light bar that's gonna illuminate to let you know if your phone's charging. And then to the right, we have a USB that is what you're gonna use when you are plugging in your phone for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Right now, it is still a wired system. However, there has been news, speculation, that they're gonna adjust it to wireless. On top of wireless, this vehicle does over-the-air updates, so you don't have to grab a USB drive and plug it in to do your updates, does it? by itself, which is quite nice. Cup holders, not really tech or safety, but worth yeah. mentioning. <laughs> um, over here, we have our window controls. So like I mentioned earlier, there's a lack of buttons on your doors. This is where you're gonna find everything. May I revert your attention up here? <laughs> These buttons over here may not seem like a great tech or safety feature, but they are. So of course you have your tow truck button if you ever need roadside assistance and your SOS button for emergency services. But seeing these buttons also tells me one thing, and that is that this vehicle has Blue Link, which is Hyundai's telematic system, allowing you to see your state of charge, set a target state, so if you want your car to only charge to 80%, or whatever it may be. Why? <laughs> what do you mean, why? <laughs> only charge to 80? Why wouldn't I charge it to 100? Mike, are you new here? <laughs> so, of course, yes. <laughs> if you are someone who DC charges their vehicles, their electric vehicles quite frequently, you know that it's not advisable to 
DC charge it all the time and maybe not to 100%. Oh, okay, okay, it's that makes sense. It's best to yeah. keep your vehicle in between 80% and 20%. If you have to let it fall further or if you need to charge it to 100 because you got to get somewhere and you don't want to make a stop, mm -hmm. totally do it. But just so you know, for the uh, best health of your battery. Once it, okay. I'll, I'll <laughs> say right now, I've never had it long enough to charge it to 100%. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So over here we have our interior lights. They are LEDs. I like Very that bright. design there. Yeah, the design's yeah, cool, eh? It's really cool. And then you get a sunroof. It is powered. So I guess that's pretty techy worth mentioning. <laughs> Um, it opens all the way, and of course, it is a very wide sunroof, so it really opens up this cabin. All right, let's take a look at the back. Okay, well, look at that. Look, you got that red and blue in the back, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I feel like a popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys might laugh at that pop, but it's fun. It's fun, right? Creates an atmosphere, right? So just little things like that, they don't think of, but put it All right. Back here, again, LED lights. They may look like they're blue. Oh, peel that. That's yes. just because we have a sticker. Oh. Nice. Oh, I liked it as blue. <laughs> Satisfying. All right, right in the very center, we again have rear air vents, so not exactly tech. But here's the tech. We got USB-Cs. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it's 2024. If you still have a USB, what are you... J just kidding. No, no. <laughs> this vehicle has a USB, too. So it's very nice to have these additional charging options. Of course, um, USB-C chargers do charge quite a bit faster, so... No one's going to have a dead phone, or at least not for long, because this will charge it right up. Now, if we look right over here, this might be an awkward uh, spot to film, but we have our vehicle to load. So that is essentially an outlet powered oh, by the vehicle itself, better. allowing... <laughs> there we go. Yep. So it's an outlet powered by the vehicle itself, allowing you to use your vehicle's power to charge other charge or power other appliances or electronics so we've done a video powering a debit machine a coffee machine and hair tools and we ran our own salon type business from a <laughs> kia isn't that isn't that it's interesting <laughs> from a kia ev6 so if you want to start a new business or maybe you want to go camping or have a backup in case anything in your house may go down so if you want to power your freezer or something you can do that from your car. Yeah. Isn't that cool? So that answers someone's question that said, can you make coffee in it? Yes, you can. Yeah. yeah. You can do it. You can run a hair salon in here or whatever business you may want to do. <laughs> run a hair salon. Entrepreneurs, this car is for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you don't want to use the interior port, you can also use the actual charge door with the vehicle to load adapter and again, power it from your car. That's cool. Which is pretty cool. The vehicle to load adapter does come standard with the ultimate model, so you don't have to worry about purchasing an additional accessory. It is, however, compatible on the lower trim levels of the Ionic 6 just by purchasing it from your local Hyundai store, which is very nice. So dare I say, I have, a, I have friends with trucks that don't even have that feature. Yeah. Like, how does an Ionic 6 out tailgate a pickup truck? And I mean, the truck would have to be on and running the yeah, entire time or else see? the battery would die, right? This, I believe, oh my gosh, I think you could power a TV or something for three days, something like that. Whoa, see? And you can set the amount of charge you would allow your vehicle to go down to. So if you don't want your car to go lower than 30% for powering something, you set that in your system's interface and you don't have to worry about your car dying, but you can still power whatever you need power. Yeah. All right. I'm just I gonna think, use this to tailgate then. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm almost out teched for today's yeah. video. Now I'm gonna take a look at the comments, see if you guys have any questions. Um, let me know while we're still on right now. If not, you can always leave it as a regular YouTube comment and I'll come back and answer it. All right, let's go. Uh, no, no cup holder. There's cup holders in the armrest. Sorry, I just have a question. Yeah, so cup holders here, and then these are bottle holders. That's why they're on an angle. So they discourage you from. <laughs> Yeah, putting a cup of anything with a there. lid you yeah. should put there, but exactly. cups, mm -mm. Um, A friend of mine, <laughs> she picked me up one day, this was like a year ago, but I got into her car and she had a glass of orange juice in her cup Come holder. On. And I don't know why, but that felt illegal to me. <laughs> to have a glass from inside your home in your car. Yeah. That felt oh, so wrong. Yeah, I have like coffee mugs in my car. Which is why I really like their cup holders, that they have that brake part in the middle, mm -hmm. because then I can put my actual mug handle in between that. Obviously, I wouldn't say don't bring your mugs in your house, right? But I mean in your car um, from your house. But uh, yeah, the tech in this car is crazy. I mean, like it just gives you so many ways to be a lot more convenient and efficient with mm -hmm. certain things. Um, like you mentioned before, that flat top there where you can, in the middle, where you can put your laptop on, really cool. 
Mm -hmm. uh, kids in the back, that's what I think of with, when I see that, you know, when I see that outlet. Um, faster way to charge their Nintendo Switches, whatever else they have, um, while still leaving other, other uh, the USB-Cs open for people with phones and such. So right. really, really, really cool in that sense. And it's, you know, it's more functional <laughs> and kind of, you can, you can stay in it for a little bit, which is what's cool. Um, Chris at the very beginning said, if you didn't say Garin, I wouldn't have seen it, but I do now. So I've got to be honest, in this room, no, I yeah. barely see the green. It is so hard to see it. When in the, the sun hits it. You in the sun, you it. definitely yeah. see it. Yeah. So this is a really nice color if you absolutely want matte, but maybe you're not a fan of green because it doesn't look green. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> it's, it's, it's. It's a, it's a nice little show, showy vehicle. I mean, like, I pull into a parking lot. Some friend goes, hey, this, that looked a little green. I open mm -hmm. the door. I got my popsicle lighting set up. People are mentioning popsicle lighting there. It's, it's really cool. It's just kind of like a cool addition, kind of like, hey, check this out, you know, and, and mm -hmm. people get really interested in it. I'm not saying I drive this because I don't. I don't. I'm not allowed. Oh, <laughs> Joseph Collin asked a great question. What's the maximum wattage for the vehicle to load? Sorry if you already said. No, I actually didn't say it. So it is rated for 3.6 kilowatts. Um, let's see. Uh, I have a couple of people commenting about what colors their EVs are. So Mike Scheller drives a dark green gloss and everyone calls it black. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, um, Kia also has a Rubistone green, which depending on the lighting, it looks great. And I mean, it's a very nice color because it's subtle, but I mean, I want it more green. What can I say? No, um, I like this color though. It's really see. cool. Um, I would, a couple more questions about the color. I want to see if I can find anything techy. Oh, Mark Shellard also said, hi, Mike and Gabby, want to talk about the NACS news or did you already cover it? So I think I mentioned it a little bit earlier in the week. I forget which video, but um, our owner has the Tesla app, of course, because we frequently carry Tesla used vehicles and he got the notification about it. He also bought an adapter, I want to say six months ago. We're yet to try it, but hopefully we can do a review on it soon. Uh, they're slowly opening up chargers for it. So we're really excited to hopefully get mm. something close to our dealership and play around with it. Um, they made the announcement formally today. I have not read the announcement yet, but I heard earlier in the pre-announcement type MSRP time frame. on this vehicle, $63,999. Oh. Yes, so I sh I'm going to say the MSRP of the all-wheel drive long range because essentially that is the powertrain of this vehicle, and that's $57,999. To get the ultimate package, it's $6,000 additional. Yes. If you want the extra bells and whistles and I would. nice wheels, I would say it's definitely worth it to get yeah, the ultimate yeah. if you're a tech fan. Um, how does the matte paint compare to glossy when it comes to dirt and scratches? So based on a personal perspective, we have not yet run into any scratches on our matte cars yet because they are so new. Our first Kia to include matte paint was the EV6 and again, we haven't we haven't damaged it yet, yeah. which, which Matt, is a good thing. Matt loves dust, though. Like that, Matt. Well, the, it shows dust. Yeah, yeah. it shows. Not show yet. Loves dust. Shows dust. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing: so easy to wipe off. Like you don't even need a wet, warm cloth to get the dust off if you mm -hmm. have a light dusting because we're around construction. I literally this thing was covered. I just took a cloth and a fiber cloth and just like yeah. quickly just wiped it. it took it off. Um, I will say in the long run, matte paint is something that you, it's a commitment. So you cannot take it through car washes. You cannot use commercial car washes, no. I should say. You have to do it by hand at home or by a professional, which expensive. Um, it's also an upsell, not an upsell, but an upcharge. Uh, for Hyundai, it is $1,500 to get the matte paint. And for Kia on the EV6 GT, it's a $3,000 upgrade. Mm -hmm. You have to really love matte paint to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We sell the cleaning kits too and, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, the cleaning kits are great, but yeah. if you're not someone who likes washing your car, maybe reconsider, try to find a different color. Yeah, if it, if it were me, let's say, and I was going to, this would be in my garage. Like I put it in the garage in the night just to avoid constantly wiping it down. Right. Um, I take it you can't save favorites, artists, or songs on the XM radio. So for Sirius XM, you can't exactly save your favorite artists or songs, but you can save your favorite stations. stations yeah. So if you're, I don't know, a rock fan, then there's a bunch of different rock station options that you can save. But it's, again, it's a radio station, so they're always going to play different, different songs, different artists. Um, Jason asked, what trim is this car? And this is the ultimate Ionic 6. Uh, How much does insurance? That's a very loaded question. <laughs> that depends insurance on insurance is crazy. Yeah, um, at least here it, it depends on area too. Yeah. If you're in an area where cars 
have more there's more thefts that affects your insurance you affect your insurance yeah everything so that's a tough question to ask i think here in ontario brampton has the worst insurance yeah. rates yeah um if there's lots of collisions or if you um live somewhere where there's lots of vehicle thefts or stuff like that your rates will be higher and then again as a driver if you have a lot of speeding tickets or at fault accidents your rates can be like pretty my high. insurance would be great on this probably under 100 bucks a month yeah. i have zero zero nothing on my record yeah. like no accidents, no speeding tickets. Nothing. Yeah, but if you have a clean driving history, this is it's a, an average vehicle to insure. Yeah. Um, how long does it take to charge from zero to 100 and how much does the base model cost? Sorry if you guys already said. Unfortunately, I don't have the MSRP of the base on the top of my head. I can get back to you later we'll with throw the it in MSRP. The comments, yeah. yeah, I'll add it to the comments. Uh, also for charging, I have 10 to 80% packed in my brain, but I do not have zero to 100, 10 to 80%, if you can find a 350 kilowatt charger, you can expect zero or 10 to 80% in 18 minutes or as little as 18 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find those chargers though. This vehicle is again, capable of very, very quick yeah, we, charging. We don't have a time on the 100% because we're not allowed mm -hmm. to, to charge it to 100%. I guess I just learned that today. How many speeding tickets does Gabby have? Um, actually, right now, only one on my record. How many have you had? I a couple, not to say. Huh? I haven't had my license. <laughs> I'm joking. I've had my license for a long time, considering my age, but <laughs> yeah. I've never even gotten pulled over mm -hmm. in my life. So. Um, tech questions about screen mirror. I'm not too sure what you mean by that. Do you mean some of our vehicles do have a digital rear view or screen mirroring, which would be Apple CarPlay or Android Auto? Um, can confirm eight to 90 charged in 25 minutes. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Um, for for Hyundai's, if he is talking about the rear view digital mirror, that's only on the Palisade Ultimate Calligraphy right now. Sorry, it sounded like that door was opening. Okay. It was opening. All right. <laughs> Someone. Um, James said, level two charging at home is a lifesaver. Yes, um, highly recommend charging at home. Mm -hmm. Best place to do it, most convenient, get home from work, plug it in. If you want it to charge during off peak hours, you can configure that in your settings. So that way you don't have to go back outside and plug in your car later when you're already nice and settled into your home, yeah, cool. eating dinner, taking a nap. You don't have to worry about it. Um, let's see. All right, oh my gosh, it is 2.42. <laughs> So we should probably end off today's live video. Again, like I mentioned, we got a lot of comments today and we can't always answer them all in one video. Please leave them down below as a regular YouTube comment if I missed it and I'd be happy to answer later. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys tomorrow.